Last week, Will Thompson and I were talking about, our producer Will, we're talking about some, some new ITLs and some new ideas, and I was running a couple of things by Will, and, and uh, uh, this particular ITL today caught his attention, and so we decided to kind of expand on it and bring it to you. It's not totally new, but it's, it's, it, it shows the application of, of, of principles in a new way, which, um, which is something I'd like for you guys to learn because um, I think that's where a lot of opportunities are in the mixed world because we are constantly running into problems and how we solve those problems can determine our value to the world as, as mixers. So uh, I like to hear in some mixes, not all mixes, but sometimes I like to hear that little extra octave and by a little extra octave, I'm talking about 8K, 10K in my vocal. But that, that frequency range can also be what makes a song sound dated. It can make the song sound harsh. It can be something that you never hear on a pair of lap laptop speakers. So if you're going to work in that world, you've got to be very careful. It's like working in the 20, 30 cycle world. You, you give up a little bit of headroom when you go down that low. Now in the top end world, you don't have to have a headroom problem. But... Um, it can it can provide some at loud volumes. It can hurt your ears. So so you don't get a lot of purchases from a mix that's hurting somebody's ears. Uh, listening to music should be a non-contact sport. So l let's start by doing this. I'm 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 going to show you. I had a shaker part, and I wanted the shaker part to have a lot of top end. But when I added the, some top end to the vocal they were competing, so I found I was adding too much top end to the vocal. So I'm thinking, well, why don't I just side chain the shaker with only the top end from the vocal? Now, I had already split the vocal off, and I, I, everything above 10K, excuse me, is on a duplicate track. So let me, let me show you what I got going on. I think it's better to show you than talk about it. Right here is my original track. This is a, a, a Dave Huff track I've shown you before, but it's it's just so perfect for this. Now here's the original vocal without the top end added. That wheel won't spin itself like a train without a track. So what I've done is I've made a duplicate track. You can see it's pretty much identical. And then everything below 8K is rolled off. Now I wanted it to be stereo so that I could put its own reverb on it. And I wanted, I put a little bit extra chorus harmonizer on just the top end. So my, my main vocalet is, is dead center, but the top end is going to kind of surround it. And it's, it's going to create uh, an amplification of just some emotional feelings. We're not trying to get frequency out of the top end. It's the area of the vocal that allows me to feel some of her expressiveness, her pain. I know this sounds a little corny. It sounds a little corny to me when I say it, but it's just a, it's just, it just enhances the feeling that I get from the vocal. So let's check it out by itself. That wheel won't spin itself. Okay, that's just the vocal. Now I'm gonna put the, the uh, high pass filter in. So we're right around 8K, that's close enough. Now this is what the vitalizer is doing. It's, 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 it's helping me make it stereo because it's originally a mono signal. And then we're doing a little processing, but it's you could do this without um, the, the vitalizer. You could do it with uh, EQ and, and maybe a chorus, maybe Enigma, maybe uh, a harmonizer with one side two or three cents sharp, the other side two or three cents flat. This is what it sounds like with the vitalizer. That wheel won't spin itself like a train without a track. Sometimes fate needs a little help. Let's add just a little bit more reverb to this high-end only information. That wheel won't spin itself like a train without a track. Okay, 
Now let me play you just the shaker part and the high end information so you can get a feel for what I'm doing. I know I'm kind of over explaining, explaining this, but, but the reason is so if you see the process and some of the thinking, you can apply this to the same situation with a bass, you can apply it with a guitar, whatever you want. Right, I got bus 35 here on my side chain for the compressor. And then let's find bus 35 over here. Let's turn that on. So you notice the high frequency information is controlling the side chain and dipping the volume down very naturally. We've set the release time and the attack time in time and, and it, it just feels like the high end information comes to the front. Okay, you guys wanna hear it all together? Let's check that out. That we won't spin itself like a train without a try. What you'll notice is when I when I when I engage the side chain, the, it, it feels like the level of the high end information gets just perfect. Just sits in the track because it doesn't doesn't have anything to compete with. So it's it's you could do this with just straight up automation moves, but there's something kind of organic and natural with letting the compressor do it for you. Normally I'm not that lazy, but in this case it really works. Spend extra time with the attack and release. A technique for that is crank the threshold down a little more than you might need it, and that'll help you set the attack and release because you can hear it exaggerated. Then when you get that timing set right, a la Jack Joseph Puig, then you can put the threshold back where it belongs. As always, experiment, send me some of your uh, ideas. I love reading your ideas. I just got a great email. I'll, I'll announce the name of the gentleman that sent it, but very, very, he sent me like four, four or five points. Um, and I really appreciate that when you guys do that. Okay, next week.